can see the back. What's up, Ron? Something's wrong. Yeah, my man, my wife is wrong. <laughs> well, Hanuman comes in. Hanuman, the great servant of the Lord, arrives. And he says, it's okay, Ron. I'll handle it. I'll get her back. Don't worry, man. And he goes, Hanuman starts and goes, right? Hanuman is the breath of Ram. And the receptive quality is Sita's union with Ram. And Ram is relaxed. He's calm now, you know? And Sita is happy. This is what you're doing when you go inhale, exhale. Strength is seeming. Within and without. See, people find it. Some people can speak on this right now in this room. But you do strength receiving within and without. You soon find a wonderful sublime capability of within and without. You know, the outer polarity. Strength receiving within, inhale, exhale, results in strength receiving in the outer polarity. You know? And we find like we love each other like never before. Heterosexual and same-sex intimacy. You know, utter, utter union, just like Krishna and Naughty Radha, right? And the nurturing source reality flows in that. That's why Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. It was the only construction. And the Buddha taught mindfulness, not mindfulness, right? The mind embraces the life, the experience. This is the Buddha. Not the sighting his witness. The Buddha was a yogi. He wandered in the Dhanapati plains of yogic culture for decades. We've got it wrong. And now we're getting it right. You are going to get it right when you start your Hatha Yoga, your real yoga. It's given by our great religious scholar, Krishnacharya, who's been mainly ignored so far in this popularization of yoga. We're having a lot of fun, I grant you that. But it's quite exaggerated. Gymnastic exaggeration and spiritual exaggeration. And we've painted ourselves into a corner with this yoga. And the ordinary folk can't get it. You know? The ordinary people of America, yes. they can't get it. We are a unique demographic. It's fine, we're having lots of fun. This must go everywhere. in Japan and Thailand, you know, and it must go to the atheists. Poor Bill Maher, all he wants to do is get laid and have better sex. <laughs> <laughs> and he won't get it. You know, he won't. He'll be prematurely ejaculating and losing all his fun if he doesn't become absorbed in his own body. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a question for everybody. Know, these, these scholarly, you know, uh, Richard Hawkins, the God delusion, uh, Christopher Hitchens, God is not great. It's sort of valid academic arguments. It's an argument between the, the theists and the atheists, you know, the, the dualists. It's kind of a silly argument, but, you know, valid enough to have it. But it's not the deal we're talking about. We're talking about each person's direct intimacy with the wonder of their own life, that's all. And anybody's allowed to have that, including atheists. But Buddhists are allowed, and Christians are allowed. So that's, that's our job, to share that. If anyone can help out on that, please do. You know, please go to our websites and find billionaires who will help us do this thing. Um, but, you know, what happens, you see, you put the principles of Krishnamacharya, the divine revelation, into your daily practice, and it becomes what it becomes. Direct intimacy. The non-dual tantra, by which you enjoy source reality. And I just thought I'd have a little, I, there's one person here, um, Marsha, from Los Angeles, who's had a little experience, and Marsha is great for me because she was teaching in Gold's gym. She was yoga work certified, you know. <laughs> so 
could do all the asana and she's you know attractive LA movie star. And um, so she comes and gets the, these five easy pieces that, and I'm going to teach them to you, I promise. <laughs> five principles of Krishnacharya and she puts them into her daily practice and she starts teaching it at Gold's Gym, my God. You know, they need it at Gold's Gym. <laughs> they need it in Palestine and they need it at Gold's Gym in LA. <laughs> Kind of a heat, an equal amount of suffering. Nasha <laughs> sat on and she's sitting right there and said, Would you mind? I'm sorry, I'm reversed to them. Spotlight on you for a moment. So, in my language, you stopped, you became not a yoga instructor of patterns anymore, but a yoga teacher, capital T. You started teaching people real yoga real yoga for real people, uh, it seems to me. But would you mind, in your own language, describe what happened? Um, I met Mark last year here, when I was like really cool and really different, and uh, I made a promise. <laughs> and then I did it for a few days and really stopped. And then I saw him go to a workshop and yoga works, and I was like, and then I really, I was kind of struggling because I was a yoga teacher, but I didn't have a personal practice, I just was happy. And uh, I always wanted to have a, a personal practice and I started to really enjoy doing my yoga at home. I don't know, where you so much about my body was doing and how I was doing the pose, but I just started to breathe and I felt like, I don't know, very intimate with myself. And um, just started to see so much change in the way I saw the approach jobs and um, in my teaching as well, and so I started teaching it. And all of a sudden, people like just started coming up to me after class and being like, what is that? What are you teaching? And a woman was like, I've been teaching yoga for 30 years. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Tell me your secret. I said, it's Krishna Macharya, the guy who taught everyone and, and worked with well. And um, you know, I've just had so, so much response to you know, teaching in this way, and it's like, there's not enough of it in, in LA and in gyms other kinds of places where people don't teach so much the connection with the breath and the body. Yes, so you became, you went from a yoga instructor to a yoga teacher, a yoga master. So we need yoga teachers, not yoga instructors. You know, adapting yoga to the individual needs of the person. You know, it's a psychological state. It's not a spiritual state. We have desires and we must move on. God's method on earth. You know, sex is from God. Our one. How we all got here. So to understand what your need is, what your desire is, and move on it really. And I'm warning you, you can't move on it until you move here. Until you become intimate with your own life here. That's it. That's all. So that's the message from my teachers. And I would like now to give you those five principles. Are we ready? Yes! yes. yes.